Hi folks, this is Jason. We're looking at this book, F.F. F. Bruce, and we've looked at the Gospels. And um, we're going to just talk about the Gospel miracles and see what F.F. F. Bruce has to say. Our first concern about the Gospel miracles should be not to defend them but to understand them. When we have learned to do that, we shall find that the defence can be taken care of itself. The centre of the Gospel is Christ himself. We must view the miracles in the light of his person. It is thus really beside the point to demonstrate how, as a matter of fact, many of those miracles are in the light of modern science not so impossible after all. Interesting as it may be to restate the healing narratives in terms of faith healing or psychotherapy, this will not help us to appreciate the significance in the Gospel record. A very popular preacher and writer has dealt with several of the miracles from a psychological point of view in a very able way, without always carrying conviction, as when, for example, he traces the trouble of the man possessed with a legion of demons back to the dreadful day in his childhood when he saw a legion of soldiers massacring the infants of Bethlehem or another dreadful scene of the same kind. If this sort of argument helps some people to believe the gospel record who otherwise would not believe it, so far so good. They may even be willing to accept the stories of raising the dead and the view of well-authenticated cases of people who have been technically dead for a few minutes and have been restored to life. These may make it easier for some people to believe in the raising of Jairus' daughter or even the young man at Nain. And these other raisings of the dead remind us of the chief gospel miracle of all the resurrection of Jesus himself. Attempts have been made to rationalise or explain away the resurrection story from the very beginning, with the attachment of temple guard deputed to watch his tomb were bribed by the chief priest, etc. As regard detail and times and place, some well-known difficulties arise when we compare the various accounts of resurrection appearances. Some of these difficulties might be more easily solved if we knew how the Gospel of Mark originally ended. We do, F.F. F. Bruce. <laughs> um, when some fifty days after the crucifixion, the disciples began their public proclamation of the gospel, they put forward as their chief argument for their claims about Jesus the fact of his raising from the dead. We saw him alive. I, I just fill in the gap there with what F. F. Bruce is saying. Excuse me. I think what he's saying is, look, we can defend the uh, we can defend miracles. Uh, by psychological arguments and all, all fair and well, but he's saying at the end of the day, let's understand it historically. How was these miracles understood? Once we understood understand these miracles the way people understood them, then then the defence of the miracles um, take care of itself. As for the resurrection, um, I don't agree with his idea that Mark, the last ending of Mark, was not in Mark. There's actually loads of evidence to suggest otherwise and um, so there we are